Right, so this video is going to take a look how we can efficiently search through a, a one-dimensional array using, again, linear search. But in this situation, instead of cycling through every single uh, uh, element of the array, we're going to stop exactly where we need to. So let's imagine that uh, we've got an array like the one I'm showing here that has some sample numbers or telephone numbers and we are looking for the telephone number 98765, this one, okay? And let's say we want to display in which uh, index this current uh, telephone number was found. Now, the inefficient way of doing it is to cycle through every single element of this array until we reach the very last one. But there wouldn't be a point in doing that since we know that the telephone that we're looking for is in the fourth box. So this number, this number, and this number shouldn't be checked. Now, how would we go about doing it? Well, in order to solve this problem, we need to uh, not use a for loop. We need to use a conditional loop. Now, for the sake of the example, I'm going to be using a while loop. And I'm going to be declaring, since a while loop cannot... Um, Count, it cannot be count controlled, we need to do it for it. So I'm going to declare a count variable, okay, as an integer, okay, and we're also going to declare another variable called flag as a Boolean value, okay. Now, we can even create a constant here, but there's no point. But regardless, we'll do it just for the sake of doing it. So let's say we have a constant, okay, uh, called telephone or tell, okay, and its value is equal to 98765, okay? All right. Now, before we get started, we need to initialize our two variables, the count variable and the flag variable. So I'm going to say that the count variable is going to start off as zero and the flag variable is going to start off as true. Okay, now let's get to creating our conditional loop. Now. Before I make it efficient, I'm going to make it slightly inefficient to begin with, and then we'll fix it towards the end. So if I wanted to make this inefficient, I would make my while loop work exactly like a for loop would. So I'm going to say while count is less than the size of this array. So this array is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So while it is less than or equal to 7, I'm going to do the following. So I'm going to check if my array, which is called telephones, at position count, is equal to my constant, which is tell. In other words, I'm checking if, in the first instance if this is equal to this telephone number. Now, there's a small mistake here that we can fix right now. We have to say that count will be count plus one. So this will make sure that the first box that we check is zero plus one. Essentially, we're going to check box number one. Now, if this is true, then we found uh, the telephone that we're looking for and we'll say that we'll store its position in a variable called position. Okay, so position will be equal to count. Okay. And if, uh, and while. Okay. Now, uh, as you have noticed, yes, we forgot to declare that variable. Um, so that variable will be called position. Okay. As an integer. Okay. And when it begins, we will make sure that position also has the value zero inside. Okay, perfect. Now, if we start testing this program, I'm going to draw a little text box here, okay? And we're going to be checking what the value of count is, okay? And what the value of position is, okay? 
Right. So when this program starts, okay, position will be equal to zero and count will also be equal to zero up until this point in my program. Now, the moment we hit this while loop, this while condition is checking if zero in this situation is less than or equal to seven. Now, this is the fact, so this statement is considered true and we can jump into our loop. Now, the first thing that our loop does is it changes the value of the count to become count plus one. So in other words, it's zero plus one. So in this situation, this will become one. Zero will be removed. <laughs> Excuse me. And it will become one. Whoa. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing it will check is the value of the telephones array at position count. Okay, so the value of telephones at position count, at position 1, is 1, 2, 3, 4. This is not the same as the value in our constant. So this statement is considered false, and we will reach the end while, and the loop will begin again. Now the loop will check, is count currently less than or equal to 7? In this situation, yes, it's actually 1, okay, and the counter will will enter the loop and the counter will be incremented by one. So one will become two. So this one will also be removed and it's now two. Now it's going to check if the array at position two, this telephone number, is the same as the one that we have in our constant. In this situation it isn't and the loop will repeat again until the fourth time we cycle through the loop. The fourth time we cycle through the loop, the counter will now be equal to 4, so 3 and 4, okay, like so, okay, and when we check this statement, we're looking at this number, and it's the same as whatever we have in our constant, so this statement now is true, and now we're going to save in the position variable the current position in our array, which is stored by the counter. So the position will no longer be zero, it will become four, like so. Now, the problem with this program is that even though we found what we were looking for, the, the, the loop will continue going on until we've reached the very last number, which makes it inefficient as it will perform three more searches uh, without there being any point to do so. So what can we do instead? Well, when we were creating this program, we created something called a variable called a flag and we set it to true. Now, in our while statement here, we can add another condition with an end statement and say while the count is less than or equal to seven and the flag is equal to true, perform everything that's inside. Now, the first time this will run, both the count and the flag are set to values that will make this statement true, okay? Both of these, okay, are true for me to enter my while loop. Now, what do we need to do next? Well, we need to change the flag status to false when we found our number. Now, our number will be found if our if statement is true. So essentially, if this statement here is true and we're going to store our position uh, variable, we should also update our flag whoops, to false. Now, when this is done, the, the if statement will stop, okay? And when it reaches the end while statement, it will go all the way to the top. This will be true, but this will no longer be true. Now, since both parts of the formula aren't true, this loop will not continue. And that's how we efficiently um, linear search a one-dimensional array.